Hey GearFax friends, welcome to my second video about the Behringer XV Amp, that's the floor based unit of their V Amp series and it's certainly not an intuitive thing to use so I'm going to give you a bit of a tutorial right now. Okay so here's the front panel, I'm going to show you the most important or most salient parts of the pedal because it does a lot more than what it seems. The control panel looks very simple but it's all about combinations of button presses which of course makes it quite hard to figure out but anyway I hope this video helps you. The first function is reasonably obvious, we've got our gain control there written in white. In grey you'll see volume and that's master volume. Anything written in grey is accessed by holding down the tap button because, and I know it's very hard to see on the video because it's in such dark grey, but it says second function down here. So all of the grey words are the second function. You hold down tap and now I'm controlling the master volume. When I take that off you'll see that the dot here is in a different position to there because when it's off it's the gain and when I'm holding it down it's the master volume. So I think you get the concept there. It's kind of like a shift key. The next dial takes us through the amps and you'll notice it only goes as far as the first amp on that side. So we can choose from the eight or so white print models of amps there. Same concept applies, hold down the tap and now we're controlling the grey ones. Not particularly ergonomic there because you kind of have to hold and turn at the same time so you either need two hands or do it awkwardly with one hand. So how do you get around to the other side and start choosing effects? Well that brings me to this row of buttons down here. Obviously we've got a chain of effects that we can put together. Noise gate compressor, modulation effect, delay effect and then using combinations of these buttons you'll see the white brackets here with the word in between where you can configure the effect chain, add bass EQ, add presence and assign the expression pedal. It's a very efficient system but it's also a little bit complicated and sometimes when you've only got one digit or two digits in your display it's a little bit hard to know exactly where you are in the system. But anyway, let's say I wanted to choose a modulation effect and I'll turn the guitar up a little bit for this. Alright, sounds like we've already got the rotary effect assigned. So let's hold down modulation. Now we can choose from our effects system. So we've got three in white and three in grey. At the moment I'm pretty sure we had rotary selected. Sorry we've got four in white because we've got auto wah and funk filter there as well. Anyway here's our auto wah and rotary phaser and so on. You can change the tempo by tapping So that's where the tap function comes into its more conventional use. So if we're happy with that you can hold down the modulation button. I should have mentioned a moment ago to get into modulation or any of these other effects you do have to hold them down for a couple of seconds. Hold it again and it'll come back to the main display. Notice that the store button is on now. If I wanted to store that the way it was, again it's just a hold and you'll see the flashing stop and that means it's actually stored in memory. If the store light is off that means the patch is saved exactly as you're hearing it. If it's on it means you've made changes and you may choose to store them. Let's try assigning noise gate. It's nice and easy because it's just a one dial function so hold down the noise gate and our main dial becomes the noise gate function. Heaps of noise when it's low, not so much at halfway, completely silent when it's right up. It's a very effective noise gate exit out of that one. Now let's say we wanted to change our presence control. This is different and I'm not sure quite why this is but you don't long press when you do a combination you just click it once like that. Now our main control is for presence so let's hear how that sounds. Low presence so you can hear that sound intensifying quite a lot as we raise the presence. I guess that example was overshadowed a little bit by the strength of that phaser effect so let's hop out of that by a quick press of the two together again hold down modulation you can change the strength of the modulation just by operating this dial here so when it's on zero it basically means no modulation at all exit out of that with a long press back into presence with a short press of the modulation and delay switch together bracketed by the word presence here. Now we should get more of an idea of how a change in presence sounds. Starting low
So yeah, a high presence setting is really quite piercing, but sometimes that's the exact sound you want. Double press again to exit out. Let's try changing our delay now. As you can hear, we've got a little bit of delay. You can increase the speed of that by tapping fast. Change the amount of delay here. So the volume of the delay in other words. But of course delay pedals always have a feedback function which means the number of tails that come off the delay sound. So again we're holding down our second function here. And the second function for that particular effect is the feedback. So first function is just the volume of the delay. Second function, the feedback of the delay. Which basically can be infinite if you want it to be. And you can also add reverb on top of delay. We could even go crazy and add our modulation effect as well. Back to phaser. Obviously that's very extreme and it's unusual that you would use that much affected signal, but I guess the point that that brings up is that it's just as capable as any other multi-effects system. In fact, it's more capable than a lot of them because some models won't let you use delay and reverb together. So the quality is definitely there. Like I said, that's not every single function of it. I suggest you download the manual from Behringer's website and have a good look at it. And I mean a good look because even reading the manual it's a bit hard to understand. But anyway, if you really dig into this, you'll find that there are some real gems inside the brain of this one. Just a couple of quick notes to finish up on, guys. If you go to configure, you'll find that there are, I think, eight settings, and these will determine your basic equalization shape and the general ambience of the sound. So I won't go through and describe each of the eight profiles, but if you just click up and down by left and right here, just choose one that feels and sounds right. It's really not important to know what they represent, but it all depends about whether you're using a big amp or a small amp or headphones or studio monitors, things like that. Just scroll through until you find what feels good. Over on the other side, we've got pedal assign, and even after reading the manual, guys, this is one I have not been able to work out. Click these two together for pedal assign. Clearly it comes up, and we're assigned to wah at the moment. I've noticed that if you move the expression pedal, sometimes it changes to volume and sometimes it doesn't, but I think the solution is really find a patch where the expression pedal is doing exactly what you want and start your editing from there without changing the expression pedal. Sorry about the lack of answers for that one, but like I said, I've read the manual and that's literally as close as I can get to a solution. A lot of the concepts I've talked about here also apply to other models in the VAMP series. That includes amplifiers, a couple of different rack units, and of course what you see before you, the XV amp. It's all about long presses, short presses, and combinations of buttons. Certainly doesn't hurt to read the manual, but you are going to have to use your smarts. Anyway, I've done a full review of it, but just to sum up, it is a great sounding pedal, and I think it's worth the perseverance. So that's the Behringer XV Amp Floor Unit tutorial. Thanks, guys, for watching GearFacts. Hope you enjoyed that or found it useful. Please share it with your friends or anybody else who owns an XV Amp or any other V Amp series product, because the more we talk about it amongst ourselves, the more we're going to figure this thing out. Okay, thanks for watching GearFacts.